Hello. Hello, hi. Is this the owner of 5619 Jude Vincent Lane? It is. Hello, hi. My name is Zach, and uh, I'm calling here on a Zillow for sale by owner ad I, I see here. Are, are you still looking to sell the property? Yes. Okay, well, uh, howdy there. My name is Zach, so I'm not a realtor or anything like that. I'm not trying to list your property or anything like that. I'm actually interested in potentially buying it. I do have a couple questions, if that's okay. Um, sure. This is a good time to talk? Sure. Yes. All right. Perfect. So um, the, the number one thing that kind of pops up here, I see it's in Iowa, Louisiana. And can you just tell me a little bit about the house? Because I see it's been listed for almost a year now. So is there any difference between the pictures and the description and what's going on right now? Absolutely nothing. Maybe some flowers. <laughs> <laughs> um, we actually live, um, our address is Iowa. Are, are you familiar with Lake Charles or anything at all? Or? So I have partners in Lake Charles. And so just a full disclosure, I live in Florida. And uh, I don't know if you know about Florida, but our property taxes are insane. My insurance yeah. is up 30, 40% all my rentals. And so I'm looking to buy cheaper real estate with partners I have in the Lake Charles area because it just makes a lot more sense. And frankly, everyone's a lot nicer in Louisiana. <laughs> yes. Well, we live more east. I, when people ask me where I live, I say I live in East Lake Charles because it's, it's really, um, Iowa is really about 10 miles east of where I actually live. So I live off of uh, Highway 14, 397. Are you familiar where Morgan Field is? No, I know Lake Charles. Okay. I know Westlake. I know Moss Bluff. And okay. Then... I, I, just, I live about um, eight minutes from the interstate, 210, from Highway 14 where Walmart is and okay. all that. What about I-10? Is that hey. close by I-10 at all? Yeah, yeah. Ah, I take 210. Okay. 210's a loop of 10. Got it. Yeah. Okay. I could be I'm looking at a map right now. I have no idea. Um, in probably 15 minutes, you know. So anyway, I, I, I'm just not that far out. Sometimes people get confused on where, where exactly we live. But anyway, yeah, the pictures are exactly the same. Okay. We just, um, you know, we have a lot of calls and lookers and stuff, but, um, you know, we just ask and you know, a lot because we have a lot, you know, with the pool and the bulkhead and all that. Okay. So you said you're so, asking a lot. I mean, so you, you think it's a lot? That's what people, oh, no. That's why I haven't moved. You know, people, people, you know, they're looking around about 350, you know, so, but, you know, it's, some people don't want a pool, some don't want to live on the water, you know, just different things. Got it. Now, I wouldn't ask, I wouldn't ask more than I, I think it's worth. <laughs> Got it. And how did you determine the value of it? Is there just a similar house nearby that sold for that price? Uh, we had it appraised, and then um, oh wow, you know, how much was that offer? No, we had it appraised. From, we had an appraiser come out and appraise it. Oh, they appraised it. Oh, okay. And what do they appraise yeah. it for? It's a secret. Oh, it's a secret. Yeah. Why is it a secret? I'm just not telling. Okay. Well, well you know, I, it's only it's it's only under roof. Okay. You know when you have your house appraised, did you know that? If what's a I I know how when appraisals have, work. Yeah, it's only under roof. We ha and it doesn't cover the pool, the bulkhead, the shed, the pier, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So so we had to add, you know, of course, add more than. But you know more than what it appraised for. Got it. I, I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. I, there's something that's not a secret, and that's what the county appraised the property at, and that's two hundred twelve thousand. That one's public yeah. information. It's not a secret. And then I see here Zillow has it at two hundred ninety eight thousand. Was that appraisal anywhere near that? No, it was no. much much more. It was much more. Okay. Okay. I'm just kind of curious, you know, like I'm not trying to bust your chops here or anything like that. Oh, I um, I mean, I, I see it's been listed for 435 and then it got yeah. down to 433, now 430, now it's at 423. And yeah. so I'm just kinda like, should I just wait for you to chop it down to chop down another 20, 30 grand to call you back? Because like, I mean, it, I see it keeps cutting. Um, it just depends. Um, we're trying right now, you know, we're not, we're at a, you know, it's not an emergency that we move, mm -hmm. and what we what we kind of want 
want, we need kind of close to that amount. So I don't okay. know if I'll go down that much more. Okay. So what was your name again? Kelly. Kelly. Uh, nice to meet you, Kelly. And, and so I'm just asking this, you know, I, hopefully this isn't a secret, but if you know, if you listed this as a realtor, you got to spend 6% yeah, closing costs, all that stupid stuff. I'm looking to buy it cash. This seems like a nice rental unit. You, know, you buy it, it's all good. Now, if I'm going to buy this thing cash and just buy it as a nice rental property, right? I mean, that's what I'm looking to do, full disclosure, right? I'm not, that's not a secret. If I bought this cash, what price would work for you? No gimmicks. I don't want to call you back in six months when you probably cut the price again. What number works? Because this thing's been listed for a little bit and I just want to know. Uh, we probably would go down maybe about two or three thousand, not much more. Okay. So just because go ahead. I, I just wanna I wanna understand that your actual price because I don't wanna call you back in a couple months and now it's listed for four fifteen and now I look I, like an idiot I, in front of my partner. Because no, you said you're only gonna do three thousand and it's gonna keep cutting down. I wouldn't I wouldn't go that low. Okay. I mean I'm we, not that desperate. I mean, are, are you looking to move to another area? Yeah, just to Carlos. My, my grandkids and my kids live in Carlos. Okay. So we, we just want to move closer to them. Jeez, Kelly, this, is, this is hard. I yeah. mean... Go ahead. I mean, if you could tell me the appraised value, I, I would... Hopefully I can be near that. But, like, I, I mean, I just have to trust the appraiser. You know, I, I, can't, I can't trust Zillow... I mean, two twelve for what the county put it as. No, there's no way. So, so can you tell me I, roughly what the appraised value is, and maybe I can just be somewhere near that. And I can just go back to my partner and say, "This is what their appraised value is." Let's just hit that. I mean, possibly. No, I, I, mean, I, I can't go that. I can't go what they appraised it at. Oh, it was too low. Yes. Got it. It's okay. much more than those, but not that. Not at that price. Got it. Okay. I mean. <sighs> You're saying it's a lot. Would you take, Kelly, would you take payments on the property? No. No? Okay. So you want me to buy the property for more than the appraised value and not take payments? Correct. Okay. Because we probably spent probably $80,000, $90,000 more than what the appraisal was. The appraisal was close to four, you know. Closer, you know. I'll tell you, it was three, like three ninety. Okay. I mean. And then we, and then, you know, the pool and the pergola and just the bulkhead was like twelve thousand dollars. Okay. You know, so we can't just walk out without. Got that. it. Is the grass still dead in the front of the house? Say again. Is the grass still dead in the front of the house? Oh no, it's it's that was uh, in the winter. Okay, good. That's why I was asking. All right, let me um. Let me talk to my partner. I mean, it's no secret here. I, I, I couldn't be anywhere near that. And it seems like you're not going to want to get yeah, anywhere near that appraised value. So I appreciate the conversation. It's a beautiful property. Sure. And uh, if anything changes, um, I'll probably give you a call back. So I appreciate sure. it. Thanks for the conversation, Kelly. You're welcome. Bye. I mean, I don't know what to do here. <laughs> like, I mean, I want more than the appraised value, which is already stupid. I want to take payments. It's like, I'm not even offering this lady because like, if I gave her a, a price, it's now it's anchored. Okay. So you understand that the price is now anchored. And so she's a lady that just has to keep cutting the price. And I, I kind of check when she's desperate. And so I hope you guys like, I'm not trying to force an offer with this lady specifically because she has to just keep cutting her price till she, her delusionalness like comes off. Because if I tell her three seventy, she's gonna come back in three years and call me and say three seventy. I'm doing it, and she won't get off that number. And so th there's no point of calling her. This is a follow up, follow up, follow up. This is most likely. I'm just letting everybody know here, just from from my experience. This is a golden like creative finance opportunity here, like. She's going to have to get desperate enough, but I, I would, this is a creative finance. It's a nice property. 
I ain't gonna lie. It's a nice property. She's just crazy. So we love her crazy people, you know, but was, ugh, Lord, I, I can't do anything with that. So let's go to the next deal. That, that was uh, ridiculous right there. Jeez Louise. All right. Hey, this is Zach. Please give me a call back whenever you can. Thank you. Just re really quick while I get the next one, you know, why is this a golden opportunity? This is a golden opportunity because when it's a really nice house, you can get a new renter in there all day and take over the financing and make a really good spread. So, yeah. Let's skip some of these crazier ARVs. This is an apartment. This is more my speed right here. Okay. And, and, and FYI, Iowa. I, Iowa. Lord. These Louisiana people don't even know how to talk. Jeez, man. <clears throat> you have a whole state called Iowa. Am I crazy? But you know, I, you know, these are all people with objections. <clears throat> so I just gotta, uh, gotta go. Oh Lord, okay. Now demobilized. What? Hello. Hello, hi. Is this the owner of eight two one Red Poppy Lane? Yes, it is. Hello, hi. Uh, my name is Zach. Uh, what's your name? Brian. Mar Marine? Brian. Brian. Oh, hi, Brian. Nice to meet you. Um, I'm calling on the Zillow for sale by owner ad here. I was still seeing if you're looking to sell the property. Correct. Okay. And I just had a few questions. I'm not looking to list the property. I'm not one of those realtors hammering you. I'm actually potentially looking uh, to purchase the property. And I just had a, a couple questions, if that's okay, if you have time. All right. What you got? Yeah. So... Uh, first and foremost, I see this property here. It looks like it's in a nice HOA community, and uh, it's been listed for a little bit here. So my, I, mean, I guess my first question is, uh, how is the condition of the property from the pictures till now? Because it's been listed for a little bit. Um, I mean, it looks perfect. It's not had anyone in it. We um, bought it. Well, my, my daughter was going to move in it, and she got into medical school. And so she, you know, changed her mind and couldn't. And so, basically, it's only been listed on Zillow, and it is a community that you cannot put signs up outside, or, you know, I didn't want to list it with a realtor and have to pay the, you know, 6%, um, and so it's really just not been listed, but, you know, and that's fine, we'll sell it when we sell it, and, it, and actually, um, I have you know, people that's in that area. So I don't want it to go to just, you know, I have another daughter that lives in that area. So, you know, I didn't want to sell it to just anybody. Okay. And it is a super, super community. It's actually one of the actual ones over here that, because I notice you're in a different area. You're in a, where are you located? So I'm in Florida and then my other partner's yeah. out there near Shreveport. So I'm in Florida um, so I like buying properties in Florida, but it's just way too expensive now. Like the average house near me is going to be seven, eight hundred thousand, and just it makes no sense when property insurance keeps jumping up. And uh, me and my partner are buying properties in Louisiana. It's just way better deals for us. Yeah, and we have several we have several rental, rentals also, but this house is not one I wanted somebody to tear up because uh, before my daughter got it, you know, we went in and painted everything and. Mm. Uh, had everything checked out. There's nothing wrong with it. It's uh, and what I was trying to say is it's actually in a gated neighborhood that the gate works, and you know it's very, um, it's very safe. I uh, wouldn't let my other one, but my other, you know, daughter live there. Ah, okay. Well, and there's no secret for most of these properties. This isn't going to be a house I'm going to buy, try to fix it up, and flip. I, I can't do it on this one, you know. This would be more of a rental, but just peace of mind for you, Bryn. I mean, I'm probably going to rent it out probably to an older person, most likely a veteran um, that keeps the property in good condition. I, I don't rent to, you know, any Joe Schmo. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a gated community. It's going to be probably a nicer, older person that respects the community and someone like that. And this is an older people community that, you know, they have their dog. They walk. People walk in this community. You know, they're not afraid to. They're not, you know... It's yeah. a good, safe area. And it's very close to Willis Knighton Hospital, it's, you know, which is 
two miles probably down the road. It's, in, you know, close to, you know, Walmart, Target. It's, you know, a couple of miles. Perfect. I mean, yeah, that, that's kind of w what I'm looking for. So, I mean, would that even be potentially the right buyer for you if me and my partner were going to potentially purchase it? Or were you looking just to do it to an end buyer? Um, Trying to push here. I mean, I think that, you know, anybody that probably wants in this, in that area, is going to be somebody that already knows, you know, knows the area, like I've explained it to you. And, you know, they're going to, they're going to appreciate where they're at, you know, and the house is not expensive. So. Okay. I mean, my, I, I'm pretty sure my partner's got, their kids are in the school district there and every, I mean, I can give you their information. You can talk to them too. Um, but I mean, this is just a, just seems like a nice property and a nice community that, you know, potentially want to go uh, run out or do whatever we can on this. I, I mean, my, my other question for you here is I did see this property was recently sold. I, I'm, I'm guessing you, right? Um, did you do any renovations on the house when you guys bought it? Mm, no, we painted everything in the inside was painted. No, this is a, I mean, there's nothing wrong with this property. Okay. I mean, I'm just telling you from a, you know, I wouldn't have bought it if there'd been a lot wrong with it because, like I said, I, my daughter was going to live in it. I get it. I mean, it's got to be perfect for your for your girl. So It's just a really <laughs> cute, it's a cute house. It has, well, you saw it on there. It's got that open living room floor plan mm. where you can look out and get a guest fireplace. It's got a fenced-in, totally fenced-in backyard for if you have a dog. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to have anyone with a dog at that property, but I mean, I have a dog, but yeah, I get it. So, all right, on this property, <laughs> true. Well, what kind of dog do you have? Uh, I have a black lab. Oh, cute. I got a, I got like a black mutt type dog. He's, he's cute. Well, he's one, 75 pounds. One has got a labradoodle and the other one's got a, like a Malte. So, I mean, <laughs> everybody's got them. Oh Yeah. So looking here, I see the I see what it was originally listed for, and I do see the price keeps going down on it. And so I, I'm just trying to understand Mine's roughly. Been drop once, if that's what you're saying. Oh, once, okay. Because I, I saw it go from two thirty four to two thirty to two twenty eight nine. So I saw two drops on eight thirty one, and then okay, one. Uh, okay. Yeah, two twenty eight. Okay. So, right now, yeah. So if, if I want to I mean, go, I don't know. What are you? What are you? At, what are you in? Uh, what are you looking at? I mean, don't tell me like one forty or one sixty, because I mean we're wasting each other's time. I mean, hey, I'd love to buy it for 140, but I know you probably want to take that for it. <laughs> no. I mean, if I was just going to buy this cash, I mean, you know, 6%, then you got closing costs and you got all that Correct. fun stuff that you you loved when you bought the property, right? And you, you own rentals. You, you understand how this works. Right. What's a no-nonsense price where I can go back to my partner and say, this price, yes or no? I don't want to haggle with you. I don't negotiate. I don't do any of that stuff. What's a price that works for you? I mean, well, you tell me what you're, what are you interested in paying for a house? I mean, what's the most that you pay for one then? I mean, I'm mean, looking at the neighborhood. I'm, I'm trying to think, I mean, how, you, you rent out property. Do you know how much this property you get in rent roughly? You're probably, uh, if I, if I rented it right now, they basically what the realtors in this area have told me is probably around 18. 1800 Because I thought about it, yeah, it's, yeah, 18 Um, Because, you know, I thought, okay, well, I could rent it and then, you know, this and this and this. But I don't really want, you know, I don't want to rent this and it gets hard. It's a good house and I just don't want, I know, I've, I mean, we have renters, like I said, we have lots of rental properties. And, and there, but most of ours are probably more in um, college areas, but we don't rent to college students. No, so. you do not want to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we don't. Okay. I mean, I'm just trying to do quick numbers right now in my head. That's uh, fine. You, you probably know this better than me. I mean, what would a cap rate be at, at 1800 Because, I mean, even at this listing price, that cap rate's going to be I'm trying to just, I'm just a numbers person here. I mean, you get about 21600 
but I mean, you got your property, you got taxes, insurance, all this stuff. I mean, you're, you're roughly going to net, put no vacancies in there. 15,000 a year. I mean, even at that 228, that's, that's going to be a 6.6%. Cap. I mean, I'd rather just get a bond at that, at that. I mean, if, if I got to make the numbers work here, especially just buying it for a rental, I, I think I want to make at least 10%. I think that's not asking too much for a rental there. You know, I think you know that too. And calculating this, if I have a nice so person. you're saying 180, is that what you're saying? I mean, a 10% cap rate is going to be 172,800. Yeah, and I wouldn't even look at it. Okay. I'd ruin it, I'd ruin it myself before I'd give it away. Okay. I mean, would you take payments on the property? Would I take what? Payments on the property? Oh, no. No? Okay, why not? Just curious. Uh, why do I not want to own or finance it? Is that what you're asking me? Yes. Because if somebody's going to move in it, then what if they tear it up? Then they say, oh, I'll just let you have it back. <laughs> well, I mean, you would have a there. you would have a second position on the property. I, I hear you, but what are you going to do to it while you've got it? I would most you're likely... You're not me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'd most likely give you payments and put somebody in the property... And then just Correct, and and that's right. And what if they tear it up, and then you say, "You, I'm just letting it go. I can't pay for it. It's yours again, and it's tore up." I mean, then you'd take the property over, but you could sue me. I have a lot that's of assets. Correct. That's I have a lot correct. of assets, so I mean, I think it'd be very, you know, nice if I did a big down payment with you there. I mean, it'd probably be a nice little profit you could make on that. No, it's too big of a risk. Okay, no worries. Well, Bryn, I appreciate you talking to me about the property here. I mean, it's a beautiful house. Uh, congratulations with your daughter. That's a huge yeah. accomplishment. It's, um, you know, if you, like you said, you, you're saying you have a partner here. Um, you know, I would possibly look, well, I don't know. You just have to make me another offer. I don't know. But not one, 170 something. That's, you know, I think that's an insult going from, you know, 228 to 170. But Okay, I mean, what... What number works then? If you want to take one seventy, just no nonsense. Just I can talk it over. Um, you can also discuss it with your husband too, if you want. I would probably. Um, I possibly would go to twenty, maybe. Hmm. Maybe. Okay. Do you have any other rentals you're looking to sell instead of this one? No. Maybe a little rougher? They've all, all the rest of them have been, the people have been in them for a long time, all of them. And Dang. You're too good. <laughs> I give you that one. So uh, congratulations on your daughter. Let me, um, let me talk to my partner about it. And I appreciate you being upfront with me. And I appreciate okay. the way you do this. Uh, let me talk to my partner and let me get back to with you and uh, we can let you know what we can do. But I really appreciate the All conversation, right. Bryn. Sounds good. All right. Right. Thank Bye. you. Have a great one. That was a tough cookie right there. I mean, Bryn's a weird name too. I mean, it doesn't pop up her as her name. And, and so, yeah, that, it's, it's, it's interesting. But hey, that's a tough cookie right there. But no, I... Way too high. But she apparently she owns rentals, so she's the expert. So lordy, lordy. So all you can do in this situation, and like I stress a lot, you can only just have nice rapport with them. Let them know, and then just come back in two, three, four, five months, and then call them back. Say, Zach's a nice guy. He's good. And so I want you to understand, I, I don't feel pressure talking to these sellers, or I'm not putting the, too much pressure on them. But what I do is I put enough pressure to make them speak. And then from there, if they don't want to fold, that's okay. And give me a good price that works for me. I just go to the next one. It's not that difficult of a conversation to be having. And, you know, I love talking to sellers. This is a good, it's a good game. She's got four or five other rentals and she'll probably going to sell them. I, I will give you this one though, too. If I have a realtor, you know, friend, I'd probably just give it to them. Like this... I have a couple of realtors I know in Louisiana, I could just give it to them and they could probably list it and I get a little cutback on that, right? So I could still make four or five grand, you know, from there. 
Uh, but the only reason I asked her why she wouldn't take financing, I was just kind of curious on why she wouldn't look at it, right? And the reason why I said she'd have a second position, not a first position, is if I do a lease option, I'm going to have the first position, right? And so just being transparent, always calling. So it's always interesting on that. But, uh, you know, love having conversations. You know, I just at least you can see kind of how I build the rapport. I, I, again, as you understand, I'm not the expert when talking to sellers. I, I, I will say that I'm not the greatest cold caller type guy. I'm not the greatest closer of all time. But what I can tell you is I do the work and I put enough effort in there where I can just do it and have great success. And I just show you that like, yeah, wow, Zach's not as perfect as I thought, but you know what? He still gets the report and he gets, he gets the deals. And so let's uh, keep calling here. This is Anthony. I'm help you. Hello, Anthony. This is Zach. Are you the owner of 7007 Barrington Court? I am. What can I do for you? Yeah, so I just see your Zillow for sale by owner ad here, and I was just calling to see if you were still looking to sell the property. Uh, for the right price. Ah, okay. For the right price. Uh, I like it. So I'm looking at it here, and you know, I kind of read the description. I don't see too many pictures of the property, and so I guess my first question is if you have any information on the condition of it. Um. Well, there should be some information in the description. Like I put a new roof on a couple of years ago. Um, got a brand new HVAC system, brand new windows, new flooring, painted the whole place, uh, new doors. Um, it's a rental. It's a townhouse. So I got to rent it out right now, 1200 a month. Got it. Okay. Um, you could probably go up on the rent, but, you know, I mean. You know, they've been there a couple of years. They're going on their third year now. Um, I've owned the property six years. Um, so, yeah. I mean, what are you thinking about? Are you like a wholesaler? I mean, I'm probably going to buy it as a rental most likely. I mean, I've had wholesale okay. properties, but, I mean, this one's going to be more of a rental if it's already got a tenant in place. Yeah, yeah. So, I got a 3% interest rate. So, I'm not, like, super motivated, but for the right price, I would sell it. So if Got you're it. like a cash buyer, then, you know, maybe it makes sense. I mean, at 3%, I would just cash. take the payments over. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't think my bank's going to let you assume it. Uh, and I'm not really interested in doing like a seller financing thing. Um, but, you know, talk to me. What were you thinking? I mean, have you ever heard of a subject two before? Yeah, I bought a lot of properties subject two. I'm, I would not be interested. Okay. I, I mean, why do you think the bank wouldn't allow that? I talk to my bank about it. Okay, I mean, you they can... don't want, like, a 3% interest rate passing around, you know? Not in today's market. Okay. I mean, they don't really have a choice if it's subject to. I mean, there's other strategies you can do it, obviously, with lawyers and everything like that. Um, but, I mean, we don't. if you don't want to go that route, we don't have to go that route. I mean, if it's 1200 it's a pretty clear and cut-dry rental property. And so how long has this tenant been in the house for? Uh, two years, going on three years. She's going to renew her lease in uh, uh, June, June, July. Okay. And I guess, and you said terms on here too. So, I mean, what terms would it be open to on the property? What, what do you mean? So it says, I'm looking to sell for the right price and terms. So, uh, yeah, I meant like, you know, days to close. Oh, you know, that sort gotcha. Of thing. Okay. So, I mean... Yeah, I mean, I've been under contract a few times at, at 90 grand, and, um, you know, they were just like wholesalers kind of thing. So, you know, they locked it up for the due diligence period for like 30 days or whatever. So, yeah. you know, I mean... You need to get a $3,000 yeah. earnest money from those kids. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's Napoleonic law in Louisiana, so it doesn't work like that. Okay. Well, I mean, what price works for you then if you're going to sell this cash? I'm just, I'm just trying to understand this because obviously 90, only the wholesalers looking to make a little bit of money is at that. I mean, for a real cash offer, what would work? Um, for me to consider something that, you know, I'd really prefer something in the 95 to 100 range. If it's going to be below that, then I would be looking to do like a 1031 because like anything lower than that is going to net me something that I'm not you know, as excited about. Um, but, you know, if you're really interested, we can figure it out. Okay. I just yeah. don't want to do, like, a subject to or anything where I have to, like, still be involved, you know? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be closer 
it's got to have a six or a seven in front of it for me to work. And I'm just being honest with you. I'm not trying to lowball you or anything like that. Um, that's kind of roughly where I'm at. Yeah, that's not going to work, man. Yeah. Appreciate the golf. All right. No worries. Well, uh, hopefully you sell it fast. <laughs> well, you. yeah. All right. Thanks, man. Good luck. Napoleonic Law. What? What? Oh, my gosh. These people. You wonder why I make fun of Louisiana. Can, can, can somebody in Louisiana explain for me Napoleonic law of why you can't do an EMD? In the United States of America, there's no EMD apparently? What? I mean, I know there's Napoleonic code. I mean, let... I mean... I mean can somebody explain this? Why can you not do EMD now? Like I, I, I don't understand this. This is the stupidest thing. I, I, I'm just, I, I'm blown away by this. I've never heard that. Like I, what's a Napoleonic law? I, I kind of call them out of like, just take a high EMD. Oh, Lordy. All right. You know what? I, I'm not even getting into this. Maybe I'm stupid. But like, I mean, let me look this up. Earnest money deposit. Maybe I'm telling people the wrong information. Louisiana. Yeah, there's earnest money in real estate contracts and obligations. I, 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lord, these Creole cowboys, I can't stand them.